there are seriously so many different ideas floating in my head, and I guess I got to go with the, my gut on this one and talk a little bit about minimum wage, a little bit about cost of living, and uh, some of the stuff that most Americans are struggling with even today. Hello, everyone. Jay Rhymes with The Periodic Review. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. If you haven't already, hopefully we will earn your subscription today, so don't forget to click that red subscribe button, hit that damn bell, and turn on your notifications so you don't miss a content release, as well as like and share this video with your family and friends. I'd really would appreciate it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to react to this video really quick. What the fuck is going on? This is my first time trying to look for housing in Los Angeles. I'm a native LA resident. I was born and raised here. Um, and I've been living in my rent controlled house with my family my entire rent life. Rent controlled house? What now, even is that? I work a normal ass job. I make above minimum wage at, okay. one, at one of my jobs. I have obviously multiple, like every other freaking young person trying to survive in this world. One <laughs> right. of my jobs is minimum wage. The other is like uh, $18 an hour. And together they add up to full time work, both jobs. Why the fuck? Like, like on average, if I work full time, I make like, like maybe like a thousand five hundred every two weeks. So that's three so thousand like a month. a month max, max because my hours. That's varied. that's a uh, three thousand a month. Gross, max. obviously. I'm literally none. Of, I can't afford any of these apartments. Nope. One apartment <laughs> is three thousand eighty dollars a month. What? What the fuck? How am I? How do I buy food if rent is already more expensive than how much I make in a single month? I don't yep. understand. That's a one bad. Thirty-eight hundred dollars. Oh, good grief! And although Los Angeles is a very uh, outlier as far as like you know uh, food and expenses are concerned, it's actually still one of the highest. Uh, in the United States, it, it's safe to say that uh, you know, especially with the growing costs um, due to inflation and the uh, weak dollar and all these different things, is that it's just only going to go up. Now, I do, I would probably consider this a pretty radical idea. I mean, I don't think I'm, you know, a, a radical on either side of the spectrum as far as like politics are concerned, but I really do believe it's important to have a strong dollar in our economy first and foremost, like. One of the things that we can do to bolster that up is obviously to back it up with something. And unfortunately, we haven't done that uh, in what, what is it, like 70 or 80 years? What is it, 1930, 1940, somewhere around there when we stopped backing the dollar with precious metals? Uh, I really strongly believe we need to go back to that. I really do believe we need to go back to backing the dollar with gold, precious gems, you know, platinum, any kind of like precious metals, we should have that stockpiled and we should back that dollar up. So that's the first thing I would do. The second thing I would do is obviously we need to give up on the idea that it's okay to have revolving small debt and small credits because those small debts and small credits, they stack up very, very, very quickly. So honestly, the only things that we should be allowed to go in debt for right now, because it's just so astronomically expensive, especially right now, is uh, an auto loan and a home loan. I think those are the only two things that we really need uh, loans for. Uh, the next thing, the third thing I would, I would definitely do is we need to increase the minimum wage. I mean, looking at the minimum wage right now, where I live in, in Utah, uh, the minimum wage is still seven twenty five an hour, and the last time it was changed was two thousand and eight. And unfortunately, if people would go, well, that's all I need to give people because that's all uh, I have to give them. People are at the point now where they realize that seven twenty five an hour is just not uh, reasonable at this point. But even you know twelve and fourteen dollars an hour, especially for a single student going full time to school, working full time, uh, they still can't afford that stuff out of pocket. So we need to figure out a way to be able to pay people enough where they can pay their own way to school so that they can pay their own way to start businesses so that they can pay their own way. And we definitely need to come up with a model that makes sense as far as like, you know, how budgets are concerned. We definitely need just like the, the food industry, as far as like what's healthy, what's not, we really do need to have a, a good rule of thumb and a really good way to say, okay, guys, this is exactly what we need to do and how we need to pay people and how people need to manage their money. And unfortunately, we're just not teaching that nowadays. And I think most Americans nowadays, especially on the the lower end of the income spectrum, I think that people are really struggling because they have to have have debt in order to, you know, pay for tires, in order to pay for repairs on vehicles that are falling apart because that's the only thing that they can afford. And I can't tell you how many times I've had to go into debt in order to buy new tires, in order to do like large amount of repairs or or to pay for medical expenses. Like there's so many different things that, that things are costing like thousands of dollars now to the point where it's really unrealistic for even people on the lower income spectrum to even get the medical care that they need. And if they do get the medical care they need, it goes immediately into 
into debt. It immediately goes into collections. And unfortunately, they're paying on that for the rest of their lives. And if not, that rolling over to other family members in the future. So honestly, those are my biggest three. We need to back up the dollar with some kind of precious metals and gems so that we have a good, strong currency. We need to raise minimum wage to the point where a single student straight out of high school can live on their own, can pay for their school, and pay for themselves to live with a roof over their head, food on the table, everything that they absolutely need. And number three, we need to get rid of small credit cards and small debts. And I think this would seriously help a lot of people out, especially bring a lot of people out of the poverty level, especially when it comes to people who are are homeless and you know they they understand and, and can see that, you know, even if they get paid twelve dollars now, they're not going to be able to afford an apartment. They're not going to be able to afford uh, a mechanically sound vehicle. They're not going to be able to afford going back to school. As well as not giving people the opportunity to either go to school or either go to technical schools and get the education they need so that they can increase their income. And what's really sad nowadays, it just seems that education now is just one big indoctrination system. And unfortunately, people aren't getting the education that they need. They're getting indoctrination to the point where they don't have the skills that they need to go into the real world and work an actual job. But I don't know, I could be wrong, and I'm sure you guys are gonna let me know. So thank you so much for watching another video. I really, really do appreciate it. Happy holidays, everyone, and from my family to yours, good night.